Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. It's lovely to have your company. Half past five on a Wednesday is a lovely time for us here at Highlight Crafts because we come and visit you guys and it's really nice. Um, just a little behind the scenes news. We are like swans at Highlight Crafts this week. Really serene on the top, paddling like crazy on the bottom. Um, every time Stephanie goes on TV, everything's selling out. So we have to keep trying to restock and keep moving shows around and keep changing product and currying it down to Peterborough. So it's been a little bit crazy. And of course, she launched the fabric at the weekend and that went absolutely bananas. So we've all been in the warehouse pack picking and packing orders this week. But I wanted to come on and just do kind of 20 minutes, half an hour with you. Um, talking about viewfinders because there's been quite a few of you asked us to give you different ideas of how you can use them so not just using them as a viewfinder but using them to actually make your cards with so if you've no idea what I'm talking about and you don't know what a viewfinder is a viewfinder is something that Stephanie came up with and it's basically an aperture in a piece of card but the card is 400 GSM and we've made them really nice and sturdy so that they're so that when you're holding them like this they're not flopping in the middle so the whole point of a viewfinder, and you get a set of um, four sets, so you get two rectangles, two ovals, two circles, and two squares. And the idea is that you use them either landscape or portrait, and you can see you've got one that's slightly smaller than the other one, but the outside edge is exactly the same size, which is useful. And the idea is that you place them over your scenes, and it gives you a different view, as in viewfinder, wherever you move it. So you could start right at the top with a really stormy sky and you could have some of the waiting for the storm characters down at the bottom. You could then move it down a little bit more and have like the telegraph post across here and have some of the little silhouette birds sat on the telegraph post. You could move it down a little further so that these bushes almost become like long, really wild flowers. Then you can move it down a little bit further so they become the background. And then you can move it right down a little bit further so they almost then look like fence posts at the back. And then right down to the bottom so you've almost got more of a spring scene. And it's so clever that one background paper can give you all those different moods as you come down that paper. So that's what traditionally we use viewfinders for. So I've got everything cut ready and I want you to just do a couple of cards for you first of all. One that's quite masculine and one that's very feminine, both with the um, First Sight of Spring collection, which launched today on the Highlight Crafts website, which is very exciting. There's been so many of you bought the collection already that if you're considering it, I'd be quick <laughs> because it is literally flying out and it's lovely isn't it when we've gone where we're still in those cold dark mornings and very dark evenings sort of four half four it's starting it's still going dark to bring something with a bit of color just to brighten up our craft room so that's what we're going to do so just going back to the rectangle this oval one okay so this was an oval that was like that and you can see it's the same height from here to here but what I decided to do was create, use this as my card front. So I trimmed more off here and less off here. So I've got a deeper base here, but they still line up. And then I thought, right, what I'd really like to do is show you how you take a patterned paper and you cut an aperture so that it goes over that top piece. So let's do that bit first. So what I did was... I looked at my foundation dies, my basic dies from um, Two Red Robins and Craft Master. And the largest oval is the same size. It's a slightly, and when I say slightly, I mean like a couple of millimeters of a different shape. And it's weird saying that, isn't it? Because an oval's an oval, but it's not because there's so many different heights and widths of ovals. So when you buy a square set of dies, it's square. Same with a rectangle. Oh, same with the circle, sorry. But when you buy ovals and rectangles, there's loads of different shapes and sizes. So it's more or less there, but I'm going to show you how to get away with it. All right, so I cut it out of the piece of paper and I just cut the, this bit down here where I wanted. I wanted this horse just to be coming in off the side and grazing at the bottom just to add a little bit more interest. So I positioned my die where I wanted it on the paper, bearing in mind that I want it narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. 
and I cut it out and this is the piece that was left behind and we're going to make use of this as well so you can see that that has come out of there so rather than using another sheet to put behind I just thought we would use this and I'll show you how we attach it in a little while so first thing I'm going to do is just glue this down now you're not going to get this oval to fit perfectly over that oval so decide where you want it so I've got a little white border still around the outside of the white because I thought that was quite nice and it also kind of forgives this little bit of a white part that we've got here which is where the ovals aren't quite perfect so I was okay with that so I've got one at the top left and one at the bottom right because I'm going to build a scene up here and I'm going to build a scene round here so I'm thinking about where I'm positioning it so I'm just going to glue this down on here first of all so I've just got some wet glue pin flare book binding glue you don't need to use very much of this at all in fact the less you use the better it is because the more glue you use the more water you're putting onto a cardstock and cardstock is porous and the more your card will buckle and it will take longer to dry so just you know small amounts of a really good quality pva glue and that's all you need so you can see i've got a kind of a narrow bit there which you don't really notice but i've got a wider part here so i know that when i come to put my composition together i'm going to work a little bit more on this area to cover that up so then we have our smaller viewfinder which is going to go behind and I'm actually going to put this on with some foam tape just so that it's giving me a lift and I can slot things in between the two viewfinders okay so I am going to put some tape on here now this is quite a thick tape and I'm going to try and keep it away from it's all right I'm not worried about it at the top because I'm not tucking anything into the top but at the bottom what I want to do am I putting this on the right one Yes, I am. Just had to check. It's been a, one of those days. Um, I'm keeping it away from the aperture so that I've got room to slot things in. Okay. And I'm going to do the same down the sides. You can use a narrower one if that's what you want to do, but this is what we had to hand. And normally I would say, please don't, di don't cut this with your scissors because your scissors will get all gunged up and you don't want that. A bit like mine are there. Can you see? Like that. Um, the best thing to get that off with is put some a hand sanitizer on a cotton wool pad and that will get it off okay we've got lots of that haven't we but another top tip is if your tape is super sticky if you put your scissors just dip the the blades of the scissors into water first and then cut it won't gunge your scissors up so there's a little top tip for you so i'm going to take the backing off this and as i've said many times i'm good at getting things straight but not necessarily the first time so what I will always do is put some wet glue around on top of my um, foam tape so that it gives me a little bit more wiggle room, if you like. I'm not going to keep looking at the screen and saying hello, saying hello to you individually because I want to get loads of demos in, but I'm really pleased that you've joined me, so thank you very much. It's very exciting being at Highlight Crafts because we've got studios and we can just go, Andrew, can we do this? Andrew, can we do that? He gets that a lot, does Andrew? Especially off Sarah, who runs our social media. She likes to boss him about a bit and I find that really funny. <laughs> so we've then cut a piece of card that is going to go behind here. All right, so we're going to create our, put our scene in here. So I'm going to take this piece now and because this oval here is smaller than this oval when I slot this behind it looks like it's always been like that you see and all I'm doing is looking at this little fence post here that's very roughly sketched across there and I'm just making sure that it carries on in a similar place and once I'm happy with that I'm going to remove that I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm just going to put a little mark there and a little mark there and a little mark at the top and a little mark at the bottom so that when I take this off I know sorry Andrew's telling me to move further up it's quite unnatural to work away from your body when you're crafting isn't it but we'll have to get used to it. I'm not very good at that I'm just like yeah so I'm going to position this now so I'm lining it up with those four little marks that I made so that I know that it's in the right position and I've put wet glue on the back so if I haven't got it quite straight like that I can still wiggle it around a little bit and get my tweezers because my tweezers are my little saviour 
go everywhere than the tweezers. So I'm just going to move that up slightly like that. And then that will then glue over the top of there. And you could put that on a narrower foam as well if you wanted to, so you can start to um, build up your composition. But I thought what we do is just get on with it, right? Oh, we've got over 100 people. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited about this. I love it. I never really did much of this when I was at Create and Craft, um, although we're still at Create and Craft technically, um, because, you know, there just wasn't the, there was the resource because it was a, a big company, but there was a lot of people wanting that resource. So to now be able to just say, right, we're doing Facebook Live today. It's just fabulous. I love it. So what I'm going to do is start with these little planters and these are like, it's not quite your allotment, but it's like those planters that you have at the top of your garden. You know, when you just want to grow a few potatoes or some runner beans or some broccoli or some carrots, you get these little planters with the wood around them. And the detail in the artwork, as ever, is just phenomenal from Two Red Robins, and I love it. And it's just something else to add into your collection. Or if you're, first, if you're just joining the Two Red Robins journey, this is a great starting point too. And it's really good for men's cards, this, because it's quite, there's quite a lot going on that's quite masculine. So we've got these little planters here, and then we have these fabulous canes. And it just reminds me of when I was little, I said this the other week, when me and my dad used to go into the um, top of the garden on a weekend and dig up the carrots and the potatoes for Sunday dinner. And um, a lot of you got the question right, because I said there was one vegetable that never made it to the kitchen. And you, you got it right, you were like, yeah, pea pods. Because <laughs> pea pods were just the best thing, weren't they? And then I've got, so I've got my canes and I'm just going to, I'm going to tuck one underneath here like this. So I'm building like a little wigwam. And then I'm going to put a couple of these extra pieces that you get in with that. And I'm just going to lay those over the top. So we're building depth and perspective and dimension. If it keeps falling over like that, it's because it's creased. So just straighten it, bend it slightly. And then when you put it in, it'll just fall into place got another couple of those so just run your nail down the back of it just give it a very 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 slight curve and we're just going to drop them into place because there's no rhyme no reason to this it's just it's random and we're just going to drop them into place because it works everything works so I'm just going to pop it like that okay so they're building their framework and then I'm going to pop one at the front once I've filled in the rest of my picture so I'm going to have some potatoes growing in here and I love these potatoes because they've got the flowers on them. And I think it's a really, really lovely thing. And then I'm going to start to put my fence into place. So I think what we'll have is we'll have the big sack of potatoes here. So you get the sack and then you also get the potato bit that goes behind it, look. So you pop that behind like that, okay? And then you've got your potatoes there growing so he's picking them and then he's putting them into the sack. And then I've got another one of the potatoes with the flowers. And I'm going to tuck that behind. So I'm going to hide the potatoes that are behind. I'm just going to stick this one down because otherwise I'll never get it to stay where it is. So I'm going to stick this one down like that. And we can adjust our canes. I'm not worried about the canes, to be honest, because they're meant to be random. I'm going to stick my potatoes up here, which then detracts from that little white bit that we've got there. And I'm going to pop that over the top of there. And then one of my favourite dies is this fence because the artwork is just phenomenal. The detail that's gone into the colouring of that is remarkable. You've got all the little knots in the wood. You've got the little bits that started to rot away. You've got some smaller pieces and then a post in the middle. It's phenomenal and the colours are wonderful in this and I'm just going to position this here I'm going to bring one first slightly further forward and one towards the back so you can still see the horse there and it looks like it's behind the fence I had a lovely time today mate, doing designing this it was really good and then we can have another little sack of potatoes just down here and we could just pop those coming out over the top like that so that was a bit that was left over from something that we've done before so I just want to add a bit of pop of colour now. So we've got our garden tools in here as well, which are really cool. And we've also got these bricks, but they're more like stone slabs. So I'm going to just pop, I'm going to put one of those there, just like they're on the ground, like they've been left behind. 
There's lots of those in my garden because my husband was a, stone, was a stonemason and he leaves lots of stuff lying around. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, we just need to tidy up. So another one down there. And then I'm just going to pop some canes across here. So we'll just have an extra set of canes that are just at the front of there. And then we've got some gardening tools. So we could pop a gardening tool maybe around here, just behind the fence. So just tucking one or two of those in there. So I've got one that's quite wide there. And I'm going to bring the blue over here. So we've got those there. And then we've got another little brick, another little stone there. So let's put that one just at the front there. And then we've got the little robin carrying a worm just stood there, seeing if it can find any little bugs from the potatoes to take back to the babies in the nest. So that I thought was a really nice Father's Day, granddad, new dad, you know, just a really nice man's card. If you know somebody that loves their garden, my dad would have loved that and my granddad would have loved that too. So that's just a one way of using your viewfinders, okay? So that's adding the paper. So the, the paper that you've got left over once you've die cut, cutting round it. Now I used a trimmer because the square die didn't go that big. I used my caterpillar trimmer um, and just trimmed around the edge. So that's one idea. So I'm gonna just slide that over there. And then I'm gonna bring in this. So we're going to do one for Mother's Day now or a very feminine one. And I loved, 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 loved this paper. I think it's beautiful. It's from the First Sight of Spring paper kit and it is just gorgeous. It's, it's almost like pointillism because they've just used the tip of the brush to add lots of detail into the, to give just a, a kind of a, an impression of flowers without having all the detail of a flower. So I decided that I wanted to go round with this because a round is a very soft feminine shape, it's curvy. So I wanted to use the, the circle. So you'll see I've got a piece of tape just across here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it all in one piece. So I'm going to just bring it, cut it here and then cut it down a little bit further at the back. So I've cut down the smaller one to the size that I want it to be at the top and the bottom. And then what I've done is I've taped it together so that I can turn it over and I can bring in my trimmer and I can cut that away. If I tried to do that without just putting some repositionable tape on, I'd end up in a right pickle and nothing would work. So I'm now just gonna cut up to that line. I'm gonna turn it round and I'm going to cut back to this line. I need some new batteries for my caterpillar. Need new batteries for my cutter pillow because it's all I always forget and leave it on. So I've now got my frame. Okay, you've got some extra little bits that you can use for other things. So I've got my frame here like this, and I'm just going to choose an area. So this is using it as quite a traditional viewfinder. Might be nice with some of the fence coming, but I quite like some of the red over here. So I'll make a decision that it's going to be about there. I think. We can trim this away later on. We don't need to worry about this at the moment. But I've got completely different images, but from the same collection. And I love that. I think it's really clever how Stephanie's thought about all the different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Moments that we celebrate with a card. And I thought Mother's Day was perfect with this little nest that has all the chicks in there waiting for mum to come back with the worm she's picked out of the little planters that they were planting the potatoes in. It's lovely to make a story up as you go along because I think if you make a story up, it makes the composition easier. And I think that's why it's so easy to craft with two red robins and it's really difficult to make a bad card because if you've got a story, you then know where to position everything, don't you? Which is, is just so much fun. So I wanted to use pansies and there's probably more of this pink in the trees than there is the blue, but there is a little bit of blue in, so I wanted to bring both. You get the lilac one as your free reflection, but the pink and the blue ones are available as a, a paid download. So it, it will be worth you getting those as well. So I'm gonna put the blue one just over here, kind of centrally like that. And then I'm gonna slot a pink one behind it, exactly the same flower, or I might put it over the top, I think, because I want more pink than I want blue. 
and then another one I'm keeping them all going in the same direction because I think it's quite feminine to have that kind of symmetry going on or that kind of nice curve that the colours follow through and then just because that's a little bit hidden then I've got a smaller one of the pansy but I'm then going to just position over the top like that so you've got the blue in the background and then just this little hint of blue here okay then I want to bring in my rickety fence again because I love this fence and it's nice when you've got white at the bottom so white is really important when you're crafting neutral colors are super super important because if you've got a lot of busy going on your eye doesn't know where to stop so there's no it doesn't create a focal point so if you notice on the masculine one that I did before I left the second aperture the smaller one just white and it breaks down that picture and it creates more of a tunnel and it draws the eye in to the focal point of that card. So neutrals are really, really, really important. So always think about that. Don't just put pattern on pattern on pattern on pattern on pattern. Break it up with some neutrals. So I'm going to keep all of it white because I think it actually looks really feminine. It's, it's spring-like, it's crisp, it's fresh. It's like, it reminds me of um, your bed sheets blowing on the line. In the spring when it's just that warm that's that warm start to come in the air and I'm going to continue that fence right the way across the bottom I am just going to move it up a little bit higher now we have these potato flowers as well and I'm just going to pop those just oh I'm, I'm going to wait for that one because I'm not quite sure I want that to go yet but we've got some of these blue flowers that come with the potatoes as well so I'm going to position these, I'm going to tuck one behind that fence there, which just continues that line round and covers that gap between the, the nest and where the flowers begin. So it's not overwhelming behind, it's not taken away from the design, but it's just filling in that little space so you don't have a gap between where the flowers stop and the nest starts. Now then, this, was, this is clever. So we've got these little potatoes that you get extra, but I think they look like little pebbles as well. So I'm going to put the little potatoes at the front so they look like rocks because it brings something to the front. It gives you a foreground, so you're creating that scene. So I'm going to pop a couple there, and I'm going to pop another one just behind, I think. So I'm just going to tuck that in there. So it looks like they're coming, they've come through the fence, there's some at the front and some at the back. And now I'm going to take my little potato flower and just have it growing there in the background. So I'm creating this nice curve that comes around here. And then I thought we could have the robin stood on top of one of the rocks, or we could have her, I think we'll have her down there, because she's heading back to the nest with the worm like that, ready to feed the little chicks. And then there's just some little eggs that come. So you can tuck a few just behind there like that. And then a few at the front by the pebbles just down there. And one more little pebble just to go over the top of there. So it looks like you've got a little pile. And that is a completely different, let me just move it right up for you so you can see it a bit clearer. That's a completely different looking card, but with exactly the same um, collection. It's, they're, they're just night and day. One's very masculine, one's very feminine. And that's the versatility. And then if you've got other collections or you, you're handpicking the ones that you like, just add one or two of these in and continue that story. Because, you know, we can't all afford every collection. We're very aware of that. We're exactly the same, we want everything. We're crafters first and foremost, and everything that comes out we want. But we have to sometimes pick and choose. So it's lovely when you get a collection like this. So you could add a different robin in. So maybe you've got Pip or Buddy or, or um, Scuttle. You could add one of those robins in if you wanted to. Maybe you've got a different nest that doesn't have the chicks in, but you could put another little robin in there. Just think about all the things that you've already got and add them in. So there's two different ways of using your viewfinders. And then just before we went live, I suddenly thought, oh, I wonder if you could make like a fancy card. So I'm going to show you this. And I'm going to talk you through what I did. So I took the, the square viewfinders, right? So I got both sizes. And I thought, right, I want to create a score line. So I did it 
really unprofessionally because I do have a gutter pillar crease, but it's actually down in Peterborough. So this is how, this is how I did it. Not very good, really. So I put this, I turned this around and I put my viewfinder over here. Let me just move this further up and you can see. I took this, you would use a scoreboard, okay? And from your scoreboard, you're going to score in one and three quarter inches. So the way I did it was put it over the edge of that and use my scraper from the scan and cut. As I said, not very professional, you do it properly. And then I turned it round and I did one and three quarter inches exactly the same on the other side, okay? And then I did exactly the same again on the smaller piece and then I trimmed it off. So I, I scored one and three quarter inches in from either side and then I turned it round, I put my score line on the one inch and I trimmed the extra three quarters of an inch off. Okay, and I'll explain why I did that as we go through this. I then measured this and it was seven and seven eighths by eight and one eighth. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters, but it's the distance of your viewfinder plus about an inch all the way around. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. So I measured that and then I cut a piece of card, just a white card, the same size, because that's gonna become the back of my card, right? So let's have a look at this. So the first thing that we're going to do is answer the question as to why we cut this one down. So if I put this over the top of here, other way around, Melanie, like that, and line up those score lines, you can see now that you've got this aperture and I've scored them exactly the same because when I fold those two score lines, because they're exactly the same distance from the edge, it makes one of them bow and it's gonna create a bow fronted card if you'd made this one, if you brought it in slightly or out slightly, it would have been completely different, but I wanted it to bow and that's how you did it. So one and three quarter inches in from both sides on both pieces will make it bow because there isn't enough room for this to sit flush, okay? And then when I folded it in, I thought, right, this one here, this one at the back, if I didn't trim any off, you would see this piece coming up through here. So I trimmed it away so you don't see it. So all you see is this bit, and this bit is the bit that's gonna to stick to the back of your card. So it works. When you, when you do it, you'll know what I mean, but I've trimmed it down ready so that we could get this demonstration in as well. So when I fold that flat, before I trimmed it, you would see the excess card here. But because I've trimmed it, you don't. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I need to just let me think about this before I do it, because the likelihood is I could do it very wrong and that would be a disaster is I'm going to stick this in between the two of these, okay? So I'm gonna stick it first of all to the back of this one, like that. So that's gonna go on the in, so the tabs are gonna go inside that extra square that we've done. And make sure you've got your square, your right, the, or square-ish, because it's about an eighth of an inch difference. So I'm gonna do this. And what I'll do is I will I'd say this every time and then I regret it in the morning when I've added to my workload. But what I'll do is I will write up little instructions for this and I'll get Sarah to put it on the Facebook page because it won't take me long to do. So you don't have to remember it. And I'll do it from scratch so you can see exactly what I mean. Right, so we'll do this. I just wanted to try and get three demos in for you before we, um, before we close up for the night. Right, so let's get some glue on there. So I'm not, oh, not sh shrink, not scrimping on my glue because this is going to have to take the pressure of a curve. And when you when something's holding something that's curving, it will pull a little bit more. So just make sure that you're not don't scrimp on your glue. You could use red liner tape, absolutely, if that's what you wanted to do. But as I said, I'm good at getting things straight, but not necessarily first time just like that, <laughs> just like I did then. And if that had been red liner tape, I would have been starting again. So I'm gonna fold that back and then I'm gonna turn it over. And the easiest way to do this is to fold the glue bit in and then fold that over there rather than trying to do it stood up and fighting with the cardstock. 
wherever you can glue flat because it makes it much much easier to line up okay so I'm happy with that now and then when I stand that up you can see that I've got that bow there and then the second one is going to go on the round the front so your square is going to come to the front still and it's going to tuck in and that is going to also make the back bow so this is a really different style of card it's almost like you're looking into it so i think what we need to do with this is let's have a look what it looks like if i push that in there so you can either have it so that that bit bows back like that but I think if I put another score line yeah I'm going to put another score line in there I'm going to bend it again I think <laughs> anything could happen now this is me just thinking off the cuff now so if I just put another score line about half a centimeter down either side like this please use a proper scoring tool this is me being really unprofessional but it's what I've got to hand we make do amend just use what we can as crafters don't we whatever it's usually what's not on the floor <laughs> what's still on the table is what gets used like my husband will come in my craft room he's like what are you looking for i'm like oh i'm looking for this he's like well why do you not just look on the floor first because it's always there rude right so i'm creating like a, a little bit more of a spine now so let's see if this works a little bit better and makes it a bit sturdier and being able to Keep that curve at the front so let's see if this works I'm hoping it will that's better so now I've created a spine at the side there so now it all slots together beautifully and creates still you've still got that curve at the front okay so what I'm gonna do now is put glue on here so I put the nozzle of the glue onto the card I squeeze them I don't do this from dripping it all over like that and I scratch the glue onto the card okay so it stops it coming out in too fast and it means that you get just the right amount of glue okay and we're going to go down that seam there across here right down the bottom other side and then scratch that glue in like that so let's do this one first and glue that one in and then drop this one round and glue that one in so I'm now pushing the back of my card this piece here onto that piece there all right now I can't put it down and press it because it will crease because it's got a bow in it so I'm just going to get my hand inside that aperture and just run my hand under there so I'm supporting it underneath and just running my hand across there like that and then the same here so like that so two one set of your rectangle viewfinders and that will give you that so you can see that it's slightly bowed at the back and it's slightly bowed at the front but it will stand by itself and i think that's a, another really good way of using your viewfinders and it's good because you've got because you've got a smaller one you've created a bow you can still tuck things under your frame there and you can also it creates it creates instant perspective because you're looking into it and then it would just stand up this is probably one that you'd have to make a box for because you wouldn't want to put it into an envelope although if you had if you made an envelope with a spine you might get away with it but you you know what just make a pretty box to go with it and decorate the box so I hope that gives you a few ideas of what you can do with your viewfinders. I'll write that instruction up for you in the morning. So give Sarah time to put it on. So it should be on by the weekend. And thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as ever. And we will see you very soon. Don't forget, we're, also, we're on both channels at the moment. We're on Create and Craft and we're going to be on the craft store. Um, I'm on the craft store on Friday for my first shows, which is very exciting. And yeah it's going to be good it's going to be one big happy family with lots of new people to share our ideas with so take care stay safe and i'll see you soon